Hello everyone, it's Graham from Lakeside and a slightly different video this time uh, to what I normally do. Over the last couple of months I've been asked by quite a few people on how I clean my track and could I do a quick video on the method. Um, well, I thought what I would do, well, I've got it in my memory because another one came up yesterday on the last video I did. Um, I will try and attempt to do uh, a video today showing just that um, but rather than just showing what I use now I thought I'll show you what I have been using in the past as well um, now many of these you will know um, and uh, you will probably know all of them actually um, but I thought I'll give you an overall picture um, just so that any newcomers are aware of what is on the market and what has been on the market and as far as I know, most of these things which I'm going to show you is still on the market. Um, so let's start off with the real basic one. So the real basic one for me is every, I don't know, two months or so, I go around the whole of the track and I use the famous track rubber. Now I don't use this very often because it is abrasive and um, it does take, it certainly takes the gunge off, no problem at all. But if you overuse these you can wear the track down believe it or not and it, it can cause a few issues. So sure use track rubbers but sparingly because as I say they, they do, um, they are abrasive and can wear the track down. So that's the first thing that gets all, off all the real dirty grime if you've got you know, a pretty bad dirty track. So that's the track rubber. <clears throat> I only use Pico now. I've tried different versions. I've tried the Hornby version which I, <laughs> I threw away after the first time I used it. It was absolutely terrible. Um, so I, I stick to the Pico version. But as I said there's other variants out there so up to you which one you choose but I use the Pico. Um, I've got a Pico track, um, so it seems only right and fair that I should use their track rubber too, and I find it absolutely adequate for what I need. It brings the track up lovely, but use it sparingly. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing is really um, items which use some kind of um, solvent to uh, clean the track. Now obviously using a solvent is a, a much safer way uh, of cleaning a track because you're not wearing anything away, it's just dissolving the grease and the grime on the track and then gets picked up as the <clears throat> cleaner goes round. So I'll start off with a very basic one to begin with and that's these little efforts. And what they do, they you clip these underneath a truck on the axle and if you can see just here there's two little arms which stick out and they clip literally underneath the axle of a coach or a wagon and then they run along, it's that way up by the way, they run along the track and they clean the track as they progress. Now if I get a wagon I'll see if I can do this the right way around. So they literally just clip onto an axle like so and they are free to move up and down. <clears throat> so the just the weight of those, you can see that now resting down, just the weight of that going around the track will clean your track for you. So really all you've got to decide is what you're going to put on this pad here, what you're going to put on this pad as regards a solvent. Now, for me, I've used in the past this stuff called Gugon. And a year or so ago, I guess, um, everybody was talking about this stuff, Gugon, and um, it was supposed to be Miracle Worker. Well, it is. I mean, it really does clean the track up great, I have to admit. Um, the problem I have with this stuff is that um, after it's evaporated, it leaves 
I found that it leaves a small amount of residue on the track. And if I was to wipe my finger on the track, I could see on my finger the residue left by this goo gone. I really, really do not want that residue on the track. Yes, that liquid has evaporated from the track, but it's left a residue on the track. So I stopped using that <coughs> for that particular reason. Um, yeah, it cleans it, but I found it left a residue, so I no longer use that. But other people use it and say it's fine, so the choice is yours. What I tend to use is isopropyl alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol if you like. Um, and I tend to use that because it evaporates very, very quickly. Uh, it doesn't leave a residue and it certainly cleans the track. And this is very, very cheap too. Um, so, and you can get a big bottle of like this for a few quid. So that's, this is what I use <coughs> is the uh, rubbing solution alcohol. So all I do with going back to this is that I just drop a few drops of alcohol onto this pad, put it on the track, and this can run while you're running some trains, for instance, uh, at your leisure. So it's cleaning the track as your train is going round. No hardship whatsoever, and uh, for a light clean, perfect. Um, and as you can see from the pads there, it certainly picks the, the gunge up. So that's one of my favourites. That's one of the ones I tend to use the most, to be honest with you, because it's not abrasive. It just dissolves uh, the gunge on the track and then picks it up again on the on the next time it goes around the track. So that's that version. The next version, which I'm sure many of you will recognise um, is the old Hornby Triane track cleaner. Um, works in basically the same principle. You have a felt pad here, which you take the lid off and you soak the reservoir here with, um, when I was a kid, I used to use methylated spirits, um, which I used to nick from my dad. Um, but again, what I tend to do is use my um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol on that. And again, you can see it works. And that's a reasonably new pad I'll put in there. Um, so again, that is another option. And you can pick these up fairly cheaply at um, train shows and things like that, second hand. Um, so that's that one. Very, very old, obviously. And maybe some of the youngsters won't recognize it but I certainly recognize it from when I was a lad. <clears throat> the next one up I've got is something which uh, I bought a couple of years ago now probably about three years ago maybe even more um, and it's this. Now this is made by Dapol and it's it seemed uh, a great idea to begin with, oh. um, but in practice, I never found it actually very efficient. Um, it it should work great, but in practice, um, it really isn't. Um, it seems like a lot of hard work and energy just to clean the track. Um, and what it is, it's a um, it's not motorized. There's a motor in it, but it's not actually motorized. So you have to pull this along with a, a, a locomotive. Um, but that's the on off button there. And you press that down and a motor starts. And what that motor does, it does two things. Um, it drives a disc here. Uh, that goes round and round, pretty much like a Dremel disc. Um, and it's, again, if I can show you, it goes up and down the sprung weight so that when it's resting on the track there's a bit of a spring in it to keep it on the track. And that disc is replaceable with either, uh, as you can see on there, I've got a very, very fine um, disc of emery cloth. 
um, again, abrasive, very abrasive. Um, or what you can do is in the kit, which it comes with it, um, you've got some other additions. So you've got these things here, which um, you can soak in some kind of um, liquid, like the rubbing alcohol. Um, but these ones here are mainly for buffing and polishing the track. Um, these are the spare, over here, these are the spare um, discs which have got the emery cloth on it. Um, but the kit which I have, which is this one, uh, which you can buy separately, uh, this contains a whole load of other different things. Um, so you've got spares for it, you've got spare emery cloth disc, you've got a different fan, you've got a tool here for taking the thing apart. Um, I say there's a few spares in here as well in case these wear down. Springs for the spring on that disc. Um, the other thing it has got is the facility to be run by DCC so you can control it from your um, control panel. The other thing this functions as is a hoover and that's what that is. That is a shield to go over there to stop the muck and grime coming back out again. So it's very much like it, 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 you don't have to clean, you can just go around and hoover your track. Um, so it sucks it up through here, including the, the muck and the grit which is on your track, puts it into that reservoir there and stops it coming out using this fine mesh so the air can come out but not the crud is actually picking up. In theory it should work very well on, on that little thing there, that just there, that's for putting any fluid you want which will soak into a pad that you have on here. In theory it should work um, uh, but I've not really had, it, it, and it does work but it <laughs> It's not great, put it that way. Um, I've, I've never found it to be particularly efficient, put it that way. It will do it, but not efficiently, in my experience. <clears throat> Other people who have these might go, it's the best thing since sliced, sliced bread. So, you know, again, you pay your choice, uh, pay your money and take your choice. Uh, so that's the Dapol version. Um, and the last one, uh, which is the one which I tend to use primarily um, is the CMX wagon which is this effort here and this is absolutely bloody fantastic it really is uh, it's solid brass I think it's brass anyway um, very very heavy uh, and it's simple to use there's no kind of um, complicated bits with it like motors or anything it's free running so it has to be pulled by a locomotive um, and you have a filler and an air so that is where you fill it in here this is the air regulator which is for letting the um, amount of fluid to uh, come through this pad here. This pad is the bit which actually picks up the muck off the um, track because it gets soaked by whatever medium you're putting in the tank. Um, it gets soaked and so goes along, cleans the track and picks it up onto this pad. Now the kit <coughs> comes with several things really but it comes with uh, a long strip of replacement material which once this gets impregnated so much that it's you know you, you've got to throw it away um, then you just replace this pad very simply by undoing that clip and that clip cutting off a piece of material and replacing it on the top so it's literally a couple of minutes job to replace the material and this I find to be the most efficient, the most non-abrasive solution to cleaning my track. And again, 
all you need do is have a train running and having that um, on the track as it goes round. Some people have this facing forward, so the locomotive is here and you push it. Other people tend to pull it. The argument is that what it's doing is that as it's pushing, it's putting the liquid out on the track here and the locomotive is picking up some of that liquid and cleaning its wheels. <clears throat> well, that's fine, but the problem I find with that in theory is that if you're doing that, yes, you are getting the liquid from here, but because it's now um, melted, if you like, the gunge which is on the track, that could be picked up by the locomotive which is pushing it. So I tend to pull, I tend to pull this rather than push it. Because it's heavy, <coughs> you're going to need a reasonably powerful locomotive. Um, so I tend to use my Class 24 Schultzer uh, diesel for this, which pulls this beautifully. It can just trundle around at a low speed, cleaning the track. That is my number one cleaner for track work. Again, I used to use Google, this stuff. I used to use that, but now I've gone over to using the alcohol, rubbing the alcohol. Um, it's clean, efficient, evaporates very quickly, and I'm not left with any residue. Um, so that's my number one pick. If you like it's quite expensive this was I think it was about 98 pound when I bought this and this was going back about three years ago I have no idea how much they are now they've probably improved it and it's probably gone up in price as well it's American um, and so it comes with KD couplings fitted um, but because they're in a lem pocket you can obviously pick and choose whichever coupling you so wish to go here uh, so that's it, that's the CMX, it's HO but runs absolutely no problems at all on um, my track. So that's my <coughs> collection, if you like, of um, track cleaning material. The only other thing I've got is, which is not track cleaning, um, but something which I tend to use if I get a problem on the track, which touch wood I haven't done on this layout but what I did do is I invested in one of these on my previous layout and I found it invaluable uh, it's uh, just a track tester and underneath you can see the two contacts you just lay those on the rail and you can tell immediately whether you've got a short or a break um, and it works very very well over points um, so that gives you a very good indication if there is a problem rather than rip all your wiring out trying to detect where the fault is pop that on the track and this will either light up or not light up or flash or whatever um, so yeah very very good not a track cleaning solution but associated to track work i think that is about it oh not forgetting the famous cotton bud and i use these for going down into the frogs of points just to clean them in there again with alcohol just to clean inside where the frogs are um, so that's just the another added thing um, hopefully that has given you a pretty good overview of how i clean my track <clears throat> it's not the be all end all uh, there are many many other methods out there um, but because i was asked how i clean it then i thought i would show you how I clean it and I have absolutely no problems with dirty track um, with the method I use so basically track cleaner rubber and the CMX they are the two things I use I don't use any of the other things anymore those plus isopropyl alcohol rubbing alcohol and that's it friends i uh, hope you found that useful and um, i will speak to you again soon uh, if you've got any 
questions or comments then uh, please feel free to write them in below and uh, I will speak to you again soon. So bye for now. Bye.